In my previous videos in this series, I discussed what ESRI story maps are and why they have such relevance to education. I also showed how you can access ESRI story maps and how you might teach with these. One of the wonderful things about ArcGIS technology is that so much of it lives in the cloud and with tools that you can use to customize for your own use. That is certainly the case with story maps. Most of these maps in this gallery and in other galleries were created with templates. And these templates have been made available to you and I so that we can customize these for our own needs. Let's take a look at one of these story maps. What I mean by a template is the placement of the maps, text, images, titles, and so on, and how the whole thing operates. This is all a part of the template. Let me also add that despite the power of customizing these templates, don't think that it is complicated to do and or that it requires a lot of programming. Quite the contrary. If I can do it, so can you. What you will need is a web server that you can write to that the public can access. Maybe your machine itself is a web server or maybe you have a website that you run at your university, school, or organization. This can even be a public folder on Dropbox. More about that later. But you will need some location to write to so that others will be able to view it. Before you get started, think about the kind of story that you want to tell. Do you want to compare two variables? Do you want to display a gallery? Have just a few maps or many maps? Display just a few or many locations? Your goal will influence the type of template you want to work with and you need to decide on the template before beginning. Some documents on the story map site provide guidance through this planning process. Let me show you a few of these documents. Over here on the right hand side of the Storytelling with Maps page is Resources and Links. Under Resources and Links, one of the things in here is called Workflows and Best Practices. This guides you through the anatomy of a story map. It guides you through the process. It helps you think about the base maps that you need and the kinds of pop-ups and the, the audio and the video and the photographs and the, the, the data, the charts that you might want to include. And then what audience you need to think about publishing this to. So all that stuff is under here under resources and links. This particular one was the workflows and best practices. But there are others here that I encourage you to dig into. Okay, let's begin. Starting with storymaps.esri.com. On the right hand side, you will find a download story templates link. Let's select that. What are templates? Templates provide an easy way to publish your own story map without having to write code. Each template uses a distinct storytelling technique. You supply the web map, the images, the words, and so on. File downloads include the web files that you will need, plus a readme file explaining the required configuration. Observe the templates that exist here. This list is continually expanding, so again, by the time you watch this video, the list will most likely be considerably longer. There may also be even easier methods which you can use to create your own story maps. Stay tuned for that. Again, think about what you want to do and decide on the appropriate template. Each template allows you to, number one, view it so that you'll know what it looks like, and number two, download it. Let's examine the Storytelling Map Tour template. It's the third one down at the current time on this page. This is what it looks like. You can navigate between photographs, and that will navigate the map. You've got a series of thumbnail images on the bottom here, and more full-sized images across here. You can also navigate via the map, as you can see here. And also notice these little icons on the map. Those will be important later and we'll look at them as we download them. So this is what this particular template looks like. Now let's go ahead and download it. We can click on the details and downloads link to do that. What you'll see here is a more detailed description about the template. 
This provides a slideshow, this particular template does, for geo-referenced photos, using the map as a way to navigate between them. It uses the JavaScript Application Programming Interface, or API. Understanding JavaScript will help, as I'll explain later, but it is not necessary for using the basics. All you really have to do, folks, is modify two files, a CSV file and an HTML file. Select Download Source Code. You will receive a zip file, as you can see on my web browser right here. I unzipped the zip file, which resulted in the following fo folders and files. See the files and folders I have at my disposal. I have an images, a lib or a library, and a skins folder. As you may know from programming, it is best only to alter the files that you need to alter. You need all of these files and folders, though, for the story maps to work correctly. Let's take a look at these folders and files. Under images, I've got some images that operate behind the scenes on each one of these frames. I also have some icons here. For example, you might recognize these from a moment ago. Remember we were looking at the map? We saw these little, these little push pins, these symbols. Okay, that's what those are, and that's where they're stored. And then under lib, I've got some JavaScript files that are necessary for the map to work func to function correctly. And I've got some skins here that have to do with specific web browsers. So I have three folders. I have four files in this particular template. One of them is called an index.html. And as you may know from working with web pages, this index.html is the thing that actually runs the whole web page. It's the first thing that you access when you access a web page. So this is a very important file, and there are a couple of things in here that you'll need to modify. There's a locations.csv, and I'm going to go ahead and open that. Let's go ahead and open that in Excel. Here's my CSV, comma separated value. I've got a name for each one of these things that I want to access. A description, remember this one is the Highline Trail in New York City. I've got an icon with its color. That's the thing that I click on in the map to access the photos. I've got a longitude and a latitude. Obviously very important for anything geolocatable. I need to know where it is on the Earth's surface. And a URL for the main image and a URL for the thumbnail image. Okay, so that's my that's my CSV. I've also got a readme.html, a very helpful file because this readme file gives you some information about how these files should be configured and run. And then finally I've got a cascading style sheets file. So that's what I've got, three folders and four files. Now why did I pick the map tour template? I want to modify this particular template because let's say I'm teaching about landscapes and landforms and my goal is to have my students learn about them, what they look like, how they are formed, and how they're changing. Thus, I want to create a story map on ten classic landscapes. Each slide will represent one landscape. I got this idea from when I worked at the USGS, and once there discovered the Set of 100. This was a physical set of 100 topographic maps illustrating such classics as the alluvial fan at Ennis, Montana, the lava fields at Lava Beds National Monument, and others. A few years ago I created an ArcGIS online map and an ArcGIS online presentation based on this idea that you can access, along with, an, with a lesson if, if you need it. Now I want to go one step farther and create a story map out of it. All of these methods are a lot easier, <laughs> I must say, than lugging around all of those topographic maps that I used to do. In the next video, what we'll do is edit these files so that you will be able to create your own story map. Thanks.